Here's your pre-calc lecture for 6.1.2. We're going to learn about the law of cosines. So you should read, just read in your book the little introduction. Um, but basically it's saying, recall from a previous course that if you're given three sides of a triangle or two sides and the included angle, then only one unique triangle is possible. Solve each of the triangles below. What methods or strategies to, did you use? So if we were in class, let me make it bigger. If we were in class, you'd look at this and you would probably think about maybe your Sokotoas, like sine, cosine, and tangent. Or, well, Pythagorean theorem would get you some sides, but you don't need that. Maybe you would think of the law of sines because we just learned it. But for law of sines, you don't. You need like an angle, a pair. You know, like an angle with the side across it. Um, this has nothing really to offer. You would so the way if you don't use law of cosines, then you'd have to like draw some little heights, and then you could use your Sokotoas. But you'd have to split this thing up into a whole bunch of little pieces and do a lot of little sub problems to find the angles of this. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and just use the law of cosines because you did have it in integrated three, but you might not remember it. And then after I, so I'm going to use the law of cosines to solve this triangle. And then we're going to do a proof of the law of cosines like we did, um, the proof of the law of sines. So this is that same triangle that's in your book. Notice it didn't have any like letters of the alphabet, like it wasn't lettered A, B, C, or anything like that. Um, I went in your math notes box and looked up the law of cosines, and it says C squared equals A squared plus B squared minus 2AB cosine C. So I just named my triangle in a convenient way that I thought was convenient. Like I like this 17 because it's not a decimal. So since I'm going to be dealing with the, the C and the cosine C, I thought it would be nice to name my triangle with the C over here. And then I just went A, B, like, you know, like A, B, C or whatever. Um, so I'm just going to fill in my numbers. So remember, the side across from an angle is named with a, a lowercase letter, so that's little c. This is across from A, so that's little a. And if it's across from angle B, it's little b, or lowercase b. And then I plug, I start plugging the numbers into this formula. And so I've got 17 with c squared. So c squared equals, that's a squared, plus b squared minus 2ab cosine c. And I just got out my calculator and started squaring stuff off and showing all my work. So I know you can't see it very well, but that's um, 289. Actually, I can make you see it better. OK, this is just a matter of plugging things into your calculator and using the order of operations. So this decimal, that's what that squared equals, and this squared equals this decimal. And then the 2 times the 11.62 times the 17.75, that's this. And then order of operations, a lot of kids will mess up. They'll go this plus this minus this, but you can't minus this off because it's being multiplied by cosine C. You can combine these two together. So I combined the 135 and the 315 and got this one. And then see, I just brought this part down. And then I'm going to minus um, this from both sides. And then I'm going to divide both sides by 412.51. And I end up with this decimal that's equal to cosine C. And then I know I can get C by itself by like inverse cosining both sides. So I basically put that, uh, the 0.39 into my calculator like I went cosine inverse and I got about 67 degrees. So I'm just going to, and it was 67.0141 uh, or whatever. So I'm just going to call it exactly 67. And now I can just um, solve the rest of my triangle. I can get the rest of the angles. I'm going to use uh, law of sines. Law of sines says 
Well, I want to use this one right here because this is an angle pair. So I'm going to say um, sine of 67 or sine of C over little c is equal to, and then I can just decide which of these angles I want to find. I'll just find uh, this one. Sine of angle B over 17.75. And then I'll do my cross products. Seventeen times sine B equals seventeen point seven five times sine of sixty seven. But I want B by itself. Well, I'll just divide. I'm going to have to do an inverse sine on this eventually. Um, I'm going to ask my calculator what all this equals out to. Seventeen point seven five sine of sixty. There we go. Sine of sixty-seven equals, and then I want to divide that by seventeen, and I get about this whole thing ends up being about point nine six, and then I know that I can get b by itself if I inverse sine both sides. So b is going to be. Um, the inverse sine of this number. This number is already in my calculator, so I can go shift sine answer. That's how my, at least for my calculator, that's how it works. And I got B is about 73.9. Hmm. I'm going to see how your book rounds it. Your um, book's going to round it to 74 degrees. So that's very nice. So I'll stick that in for B. And then all I have to do to find this, oh. So I took my 74 degrees that I just, we rounded it, that I just got. And now all I have to do to solve this triangle is get A. So I'll just go 180 uh, minus 67 minus 74 and that leaves me with 39. So when you use the law of cosines you want to, I use the law of cosines when I can't use my Sokotoas and I can't use the law of sines. So basically you're going to have to use it if you have a side 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 or side angle side. Um, so I'm going to make another video for the proof.